Hello, and welcome back to Hemophyte Breakdowns. Today, we are going to talk about the underslice. Now, the underslice is one of those unicorns of hemotechniques because nobody really uses them in tournaments and very few people actually teach them. Um, and the reason for that is simple. Slices generally just don't get called in tournaments. We're using blunt blades. You can't see visually when someone is doing a good slice versus a bad slice. But there is one application of the slice, specifically the underslice, that I think is worth mentioning, not just because of its offensive properties, because of its ability to stop Zverkopters defensively. So we're going to watch this exchange right up until the point that it's relevant. And what you see here is a person on the left here throws a thrust, they get parried, and the Zverking begins. So this is a very, very common thing that happens. Honestly, it's objectively the best thing you can do. Whenever you parry a thrust and you're not going to grapple, you should always throw a Zverk. And if someone is going to resolve themselves to parry your Zverks, you should continue to throw Zverks. Throw Zverks all day until they either fail to parry one or change up something. Either they get into or out of distance. But uh, what this person does on the right here is actually very interesting because the second they parry this second slice, look what they do with their sword. They slide it up the blade into their opponent's hands. Now, I don't think this particular motion is the underslice. And more particularly, I don't think this really landed great. Uh, you can't see, again, because of video quality, but I believe that this probably just hit cross guard and didn't really hit hands. And even if it did, it probably wouldn't do a huge amount of damage, and it certainly wouldn't stop the Zverkow that's coming next. Um, but what I want to point out is that the underslice in the texts is basically a play in which you place your blade on the underside of your opponent's hands and slice them up. And there's not a lot of instances where you can really imagine doing that without being open, but I believe that this is one of them. So in particular, what I want people to pay attention to is this left hand of the person who just threw the Zverkow. Look at where it starts, and as they throw their Zverk, look at where it ends up. It ends up over here. Specifically, it goes from being on their right side with their arms crossed, all the way across and forward, and then all the way back to their left shoulder before the move is done. Now, what I want you to imagine is that right here, when this person took their slice and they put their sharp blade, a theoretical sharp blade, onto the hands of their opponent right here. And I want you to imagine that they stayed right there. They didn't move. They put all of their structure, all of their strength into maintaining that exact position. What would you think would happen when this left arm in the process of making its long journey up and down would have done when it raked itself across the length of this person's blade? Well, two things I believe would happen. The first is that it would get cut up really badly. The underslice in this case would have happened for free because this person would have basically voluntarily raked their arm across a sharp sword. Fine. But more importantly, if you took a lot of force and a lot of structure and you put it into that blade, you might stuff this Zverkow because look how far this elbow has to go forward. If you could stop that motion and that momentum with your blade, just with physical impedance and force, you could easily prevent this Zverkow from getting all the rotation that it needs. So this is what I mean by the defensive application of this underslice. This is something that, as far as I know, I have zero footage on, and this is the closest I've ever seen. But what I want people to do, and I want people to try, is realize that this is a viable option. If you don't want to grapple, and you don't just want to take your left arm, shove it right into the path of those arms, and stuff them down, because you just assume you're going to get hit, or maybe the distance is a little different, try this. The second you parry a, uh, a Zverkow, push your blade toward the underside of their off hand, their off hand, not their main hand, and put as much pressure and structure as you can into that and focus on stopping the rotation of the arms. If you can do those two things, you will have successfully executed an underslice that not only minces up your opponent's arm, theoretically, but also stops you from getting zverked in the head. Because as you can see from this exchange, instead of doing the underslice or a grapple, uh, this person pulls off and just throws that middle hell right to the body, and they eat that Zverkow. This is the advantage of Zverkoptering. You can do it over and over and over again, and the person who breaks that pattern by trying to throw something different just gets hit. It's a hard situation to deal with. 
So I think that a lot of people need to start using under slices, under slices, I, should, I guess I should say, in order to deal with this situation so that this Varicopter doesn't, you know, continue to dominate mid and even high level competition. All right, that's going to be it for today. If you'd like to see your own footage featured on the channel, feel free to send me an email over at hemafightbreakdowns at gmail.com, and I hope to see you next time.